In the last video, I introduced the efficiency criterion, and I used it on two examples, a subsidy and a tax, and I demonstrated that the competitive equilibrium was more efficient, that is, produced more total surplus than either of those two market interventions. So let's consider a domestic industry. This supply and demand graph represents the domestic supply and demand for a product that has a world market. This would give us a domestic price and quantity. And as we discussed in the previous couple of videos, this would give us consumer surplus and producer surplus. Now, what are the ramifications for opening this economy up to trade? Now, one way to understand this is to imagine that this country is a small country, um, and it doesn't produce or demand an especially large amount of the product uh, internationally. So we're going to imagine that this market, this domestic market, is a price taker with respect to the world market. Just in the same way that when we thought about firms that comprised this supply curve, that they were price takers with respect to just whatever market they were selling the product in. And so let's imagine that the world price was below p -star. Now in this case, what we have is we've got a price that's below what the domestic equilibrium price was. At this world price, the quantity demanded is right here. And the quantity supplied is right here. That is, domestic quantity demanded exceeds domestic quantity supplied. So this difference here is going to be imports. What are the efficiency consequences of opening this market up to trade? Now let's go ahead and put labels on the areas here so we can talk sensibly about those. Okay, so we get to review what our consumer surplus and producer surplus were before the no trade. Um, the consumer surplus was A, the producer surplus was B plus C. Adding those together, we get a total surplus of A plus B plus C. The uh, consumer surplus after trade, because the price decreased and the quantity increased, is now this triangle A, B, D. But the producer surplus is no longer B plus C, it is C. The producer surplus plus consumer surplus is A plus B plus C plus D. And so clearly when we compare no trade to free trade, what we get is we get an improvement in the total surplus. Now, notice that it's not better for everyone involved. Producers indeed are worse off, they get C instead of B plus C, but consumer's gains include the B that the producers lost, plus this D. So what happens is, is that the policy of no trade now has a deadweight loss, and that deadweight loss is this area, D. Now this raises an important point. Even though more consumer surplus is provided by this policy than producer surplus is lost, the producers have a reason to oppose this policy. And if there are very few producers and not very many consumers, uh, these producers may vehemently oppose it. And so we can really get a sense from this diagram, not only that free trade is better for us on average, but also that free trade hurts some people, and those people have an incentive to uh, ask for protection. So that was free trade when the world price is below the domestic price. Well, what happens if the world price is above the domestic price? Let's consider that case now. Okay, now we have drawn the graph with the world price above the domestic price. And when we liberalize trade, the price that the domestic consumers would have to pay actually increases up to the world price. After the trade, what we would get is a quantity demanded here, our quantity supplied is here, and the difference is made up by exports. So what are the surplus implications of opening up to world trade in this case? Notice that before trade was liberalized, what we get is we get A plus B goes to consumers and C goes to producers. And that gives a total surplus, just like before, of A plus B plus C. The problem is symmetric to the world price being below the domestic price. Now, the world price being above, the producers get B plus C plus D. And the consumers no longer get A plus B, but they get A. Um, so the consumers lose, and the producers gain. But the, the producers...
producer's gain is B plus D, which is greater than the consumer's loss of just B. And so, in total, this domestic industry, uh, consumers and producers taken together, has more surplus. This is another example of a more efficient policy, is to open this market up to trade. It is more efficient by this area D. What these two examples give us are uh, two important implications. First, free trade increases the total surplus to a society. It increases it through either expanding the opportunities of producers, in the case of a higher world price and exports, or expanding the consumption opportunities of consumers by decreasing the price uh, for goods that would be otherwise expensive to produce domestically. And in either case, the gains to the winners more than offset the losses to the losers. But the second important point is, is that free trade always creates losers. In the case where the domestic, where we have exports, consumers have to pay a higher price. In, in this case, the consumers are, are worse off because the price gets bid up by consumers from abroad. And in the other case where the price was below the world price, the producers are worse off because the price for their product has decreased. And so no matter what happens with uh, an international trade policy, whether we liberalize trade for an exporting industry or for an importing industry, there are going to be some domestic stakeholders who will find it in their interest to oppose that. Now, the important thing here is that there's a tension between what the political process will actually uh, lead to having happen and what actually happens. Uh, what we see is that the most efficient policy is actually free trade, but that isn't necessarily going to be what happens. And that's something to be really vigilant about and to be wary of when you look at uh, um, uh, the implications of an economic model is that what the economic model predicts would be the best thing um, by on efficiency grounds may not be the thing that we actually see happen.